Morning from Africa, raining today, cool. So, we're going to discuss ring dips, the bane of everyone's life generally. But before we do that, let's do some mobility and let's also discuss some scaling options and things that will help you get better at ring dips. Mobility one that we're going to do is we're going to do a tricep smash. We're going to start at the bottom of the elbow and we're going to work our way up to the armpit. We need to remember that if this was the arm, the back of the arm is where the tricep is and the front of the arm is where the bicep is. But it isn't just back and front. The tricep envelops. So what we need to do is we'll get a barbell set up in a squat rack. Put the arm on just above the elbow and you can just go down and up. You're putting some pressure down and you're smashing into that tricep and then you leave it there and you roll both ways if you need to. Make sure that you've got the bar so that you can have your arm pretty much horizontal to you. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low, you want it just right. And you can roll it around and you're just going to spend some time smashing along. Obviously a bit more square but I'm chatting to you guys so I've got it a little bit turned away. So there, and you can work that. If you want to roll your tricep out, kind of give it that foam roller action, rather use the collar the, of your, uh, the edge of your Olympic bar because it rotates and it's really nice. You can anchor the bar and then you can roll and really try and find those little sticky areas and really get into it and try and mobilize that way. That's going to unstick a lot of things happening in the tricep. Those of you that have got access to lacrosse balls, hard rubber balls, we need to mobilize the chest. We're going to use the uh, pillar that's going to go over there. And uh, we'll, we'll be moving. We're moving. Thank you, Andrew. So we're going over here. We've got the ball. I'm going to put, here's my chest. The chest muscle sticks onto the sternum and then it all comes up and it bunches in here and it just gets into the shoulder complex over here. So what we want to do is start on the sternum and roll like that. Find a wall, find a ball, and just roll it out. You can kind of Latin about it, you can be sexy if you want to. You can do all sorts of things. Just smash around, spend some time doing whatever you need to. Pay particular attention to this little section in here. You can sort of turn around then and then shove it in there. And you're kind of just letting the ball penetrate in. And then you can do little movements. It's going to crunch a little bit. And you can also bend down and try and get it in here. And you're kind of trying to tackle the wall as you just move it around. All of these things are designed to just allow you to open up and get better movement through your chest, especially because you're coming through here in the bottom position of a ring dip. Moving along to the door. We've got a door today. We've got a doorway. You have a doorway. Doors are everywhere. Put your arms perpendicular, kind of like this. You're making a W. And you're there. Maybe step a little bit away from the door and you push your chest through. Try not obviously arch too much, try to have a better position and just get in through that doorway, get that whole thing open. So those are the mobility ideas. Now we're heading off to the bench. Ring dips. You've got to come all the way down, touch the ring to your shoulder and then come up. So we need to work functional range of movement. So we have a bench here for a scaling option. From here, bench dips are really not done correctly. The big thing is I want to load through my hamstrings. So I'm going to get my feet away. I'm going to pop off the bench. The problem is now my bum is really, really far away from that bench. A lot of people work here and they start like doing their dips like this. The problem is we're placing a lot of strain here through the front of the shoulder. We don't want to do that. We don't want to annoy the joint. The joint is there to help us move, so let's be kind to it. From there, pop your bum backwards. So now that it kind of feels like it's in contact with the bench, and you can go down and you can come up and you feel like you're in contact the whole time. Your fingers are facing forwards. This is going to start translating when we go over to the rings. So from here, and maybe come around this way, we're going to get some glare through these windows. From here, we've got the rings. Number one, when you play with the rings and you've adjusted them wherever they're hanging, the buckles are not your friends. These things are shredders. So let's get them out of the way. I've set the rings to about my shoulder height. Yes, and you'll see why now. For a ring dip, we don't want to come straight down because you'll see your shoulders hit your ears and you're kind of in this sort of weird hello position. Hello, you're not. You're kind of Frankenstein. We don't want to Frankenstein during this. You want to be able to have that free range of movement and to do that, you need to bow first. You're in a good vertical position 
the applause is in front of you and you bow to that applause, thank you so much, and then you initiate your render. Yes, bow first and then initiate your render. We're talking about the global position, we spoke about it on the uh, chest bar video. Globally extended, globally flexed. Again, we want to keep our legs as pointed as possible. Yes, we're causing a bit of a hinge from the hip joint, but we don't want to break the legs as well. That's why we want the rings really, really high up so that we can go up, point those toes, bow, come all the way down, and then come back up. You're trying to lift the chest, then the arms. You don't want to kind of get stuck here, then try and go with the arms. Lift them in one motion and it's going to help you out on render. The big thing is a lot of people get exercised induced epilepsy from the rings. You get up on the rings, it's all very well and good when we've got our elbow joints facing each other. That's cool. We can jump up and we can do that and we're kind of cool there. But the minute we try and get that external rotation going there, with that presentation of the elbow pit, the rings start wiggling. So we're in. And now we want to present, and it kind of, you start salmoning a little bit. You don't want to do that. So one thing you can do is, if you're not good enough here to bring dips and that kind of stuff, you can set the rings a little low if you want to. You can do jump to support. Stand, give it a knee bend, jump up, catch yourself in a good position. You can do a couple of those, and then go bang out some reps on a bench. Maybe put your feet up if you need to, to make it harder and start doing those kind of things. The big thing with ring dips, people don't like to not come up. They, love, they think that is a failure. But what you're doing is educating. You've got to teach the body what you want to do. So if I, there's no point in me popping up on the rings, being so worried I'm not going to come back up, and doing little movements like this. If I come down and I get stuck, develop some tension, and then just pop down. You want to take your shoulders, your triceps, your chest, this whole section. You want to take it through those ranges of movement so that your body starts getting used to it. Your body doesn't feel threatened by it and then you can start building success. So to recap, some jump to support. Yes, if you're good enough at that, some jump randoms. Up, hop down, up, hop down. If you even want to, you can hop up, control yourself down, hold tension, then pop out. And you can start working with ring dips that way as well. So until next time, from Africa, in the season of Christmas, goodbye.